um, of the different uh, slope columns that uh, <clears throat> this is just another group. So what it's done basically is taken those activities from the from the from the schedule file and it's populated them in the model as different groups. What's really nice about this is that as we saw last week, a group can pretty much take anything from the model that you want to give it. Um, any kind of model element or such you can you can populate inside of a group. So the first, uh, the first method we want to look at in terms of populating this group is just to manually populate it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go inside my, my MAR project, MAR site, and building. I'm going to go down to my, my podium level here. And I'm going to expand these components. And I'm going to see, OK, I've got a structural slab, structural column, and structural core. So these are all kind of fit with, within the concrete category. So I could pick these individually. Um, I could select them like here, and then right away it goes inside the group. But in a much easier thing, a much easier method, I can just remove that just by hitting the Remove button there, is to select the, the whole um, component that contains these parts. So I have a structural component. I select that. And now it's automatically going to select anything that's below uh, contained within that component. So I'm going to select that. Um, and then also stairs. In this case, the stairs are also going to be part of a concrete pour. So I'm going to pick a, the file here that ends in STA. And then there's an STA2. So these three files, I'm going to choose to populate inside this group. And click OK. Now if I go back to down, I see that unlike the other activities I have here, this one now has content. If I expand that, I have my, my structural group along with the stairs that are populated inside of it. Um, now, if we make this go a little bit quicker, instead of going kind of back and forth between between um, this part of the tree and going back up here, um, I found a method which, which helps a little bit more um, by creating a group. Now right now we're working inside of, um, inside of this, this group. So what we want to do if we want to create a group is make sure that we, we right click the, the My Project and just for now say Activate Deactivate Group so that it doesn't, it doesn't put any of the groups you create inside of here. So um, I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is use the search tool and search for um, the concrete uh, elements and the stair elements that we just chose before. So I'm going to go down to Edit Search. And I'm going to go to my advanced tab and you'll find uh, in general that you'll you know once you get used to using the search tool you'll find it very um, invaluable so um, since I've I've learned a, a little bit about the the query um, the way that, that you uh, do a query in, in the search tool I'm just going to type in name equals star, and in this case, um, str for structural, star. And I want to add a little and symbol, so I can click this button here, and. And I'm going to go to my workbench, and under product structure, I'm going to pick assembly. So that way it's only going to look for elements that have this STR that are an assembly uh, type. So it's not going to select these parts. It's only going to select the, the component. So I'm going to put parentheses around all of that. And in addition, I want to search for, um, for any stairs. So I'm going to say or 
name equals star sta star. And again, those 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 little asterisk stars are um, are like wildcard characters, like like you would use in a Windows search. And I'm going to do product structure part. So in this case, I want to search for for a part. Oh, and I also want to make sure I add in between those two an and symbol. And put some parentheses around that. So now I'm going to. So now this is set up to search for any 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 component that uh, has str for structure in it, and any stair um, part. And this is this illustrates why it's important to name your files properly. Really come up with a, a proper naming convention before um, before you start. Uh, modeling everything in your in your project. So I'm going to hit the search button, and it's going to call up all these elements that include uh, structure and stair. I'm going to go down to um, I'm going to go up here to my my um, my attribute. Like last week, we looked at this project attribute window. I'm going to go down to unspecified groups, and I'm going to click this this group button here that shows up on the on the left, and I'll call this concrete selection. And while I have this uh, search tool still open, I'm going to hit select. And so right away it populates inside this this group. And now I'm going to click OK. So now I have now I have all these um, these uh, items that I found through this search populated in this group. So now I have this this group with all these items populated. What I want to do now populate the rest of these. Um, <clears throat> these schedule items. If I right-click the the group I just created, I can do open subtree. And this basically just gives me an, an additional view of the tree. It's not um, it's nothing more than just a, a a new view. So I expand that down, and here I have all those items that I called up in the search. And now, now that I have this set up, I can very quickly uh, open up these groups and populate them. So I go to my level two concrete pour, and I go over here, and I've got a level two structure and a level two stair. So I just click those, select, OK. And now my level three. And you can see, if I, if I was doing this by opening these, going up to the tree, you know, it can take a little bit of time. Um, if I know that that um, I can do everything through a search, then I can very quickly create a group to save that uh, that search, and then this way um, I can very quickly populate my schedule. So right now I'm doing all of the concrete pour elements. Getting up to level 11. And then we'll move on. We'll do a second uh, group. And we'll move on to um, interior partitions and the curtain wall. And then uh, once we have all of that populated, all that model geometry populated, then we want to look at running the 4D simulation. <clears throat> 